Hi, welcome back. This is Professor Schimmel with part two of the uh, section on virology. Uh, guys, I told you last time that I was going to go over the viral life cycles in this next video, but I decided that we could do those together in the classroom. So I'm going to move on to, uh, in your lecture outline, you'll see uh, three categories of viral infections. And I don't know that these are official categories really, but this is the way I like to think about uh, uh, different types of viral infections. So let's go ahead and, and work through this. Uh, and I do want to acknowledge that not all viral or prion infections fall neatly uh, into one of these categories. All right, so the first category is referred to as um, acute viral infections. And this is characterized, or this category of infection is categorized by a rapid onset of disease, um, usually a relatively brief period of symptoms, and then um, resolution and recovery within a few days. Uh, so here's how it works, and no, I don't have this in your notes, so go ahead and take this down. All right, j just to break it down into steps. So um, uh, the patient is infected, they go through an incubation period, um, and then um, we'll see an expression of symptoms, uh, recovery, at least hope, hopefully so. And then um, after recovery, the virus has been completely eliminated from the um, infected individual's system. And so that's the, the end of the problem, no long-term consequences. And of course, I'm, I'm speaking in general terms. Um, examples would be, um, or an example would be the common cold uh, caused by rhinoviruses. Now there are other viruses that cause colds, but I think Anyways, I do. When I think of colds, I think of rhinoviruses. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the second category called latent viral infections. Now, um, this is a type of um, persistent viral infection. Uh, what happens is, is after a period of time after infection, production of the virus is going to um, cease and uh, the viral genome will be retained in the individual's body for the rest of their life. Um, it, it may be dormant for the rest of their life or it may become reactivated, causing other problems once or more than once uh, during the lifetime of the individual. Um, so let, let me go through that stepwise um, uh, list of events uh, like I did for the first category. So we're going to have um, an infection, an incubation period, um, an expression of symptoms. Okay, now that may be so mild as to go unnoticed, and I'll talk about that in more detail when I um, talk about the herpes viridae family later in this lecture. Um, and then um, recovery, at least hopefully so. And then that virus is going to remain dormant or latent in the cells of the patient for the rest of their life. And as I mentioned earlier, may or may not become reactivated once or more than once at some later date. Um, examples would include all of the herpes viruses. So I mean um, herpes simplex type 1, the one that we usually refer to as um, oral um, herpes, uh, herpes simplex type 2, that one is typically referred to as uh, genital herpes, considered to be an STD, more on that later, um, uh, herpes zoster or varicella zoster virus, that's the one that causes chicken pox and possibly later shingles, and also um, Epstein-Barr virus. And I think the um, um, HIV fits best in this category, so we'll, we'll put it in this category as well. All right, and then the, um, the third type of uh, viral or virus-like infection, um, I refer to them as um, slow infections, in some cases slow viral, um, but um, usually this category involves uh, diseases caused by the uh, prions. Okay, let's, um, let's talk about that. Um, all right, so we're talking about slow viral infections. Uh, here are some, some bullet points for you to jot down in your notes. Um, also known as, these slow infections are also known as persistent infections. Uh, and um, usually we're going to see an asymptomatic primary infection. Uh, and they have long incubation periods. I mean, could be years to decades even. Uh, follow a slow but uh, relentless uh, progression until the eventual death of the infected individual. Uh, they tend to have a genetic predisposition. We can talk more about that later. 
and um, often they will become, um, or I should say they will progress more quickly if the patient for some other reason becomes seriously immunocompromised. All right, now the example that I wanted to talk about in this category of slow infections is one caused by a prion, and it's a disease known as um, Kuru. You've got a bullet there, but I wanna tell you a little bit about it. Kuru is also known as the laughing disease or the shaking disease, and this is a disease that's associated with cannibalism. Seriously, um, cannibalism related to um, funeral rituals. All right, there was, and was being the operative word in this sentence, there was a, uh, a tribe of cannibals in New Guinea. They were called the Four, F-O-R-E, and uh, apparently part of their, um, their funeral, funeral ceremony involved the women and the children of the community. Um, they would um, prepare the body, a, a deceased tribal member, um, for this ritual, which was the consumption of this person. Um, and um, the reason they were consuming it was they felt that they were um, um, reintroducing the spirit or the essence or whatever of the deceased individual back into the tribe so they, they didn't... Um, they didn't lose anything. Um, reminds me of a science fiction fiction story, Stranger in a Strange Land. Remember that? Um, all right, sorry, didn't mean to um, to wander there. Uh, but anyway, so the four. Th this was their um, their their death ceremony to honor the dead, and so the women and the children of the tribe would prepare dinner. Um, and um, while all members of the tribe actually consumed this individual, the men got the choicer cuts, which would be the um, muscle tissue, B, and then the women and children would get, you know, what was left over, um, skin, uh, bones, they would grind them up and drink them in solution, and then the nervous tissue. And that's where the uh, the prion is concentrated in nervous tissue, most particularly the brains um, of an infected individual. So um, incubation period is quite long for Kuru, anywhere from five to 20 years. Um, and um, uh, let's see, I've got some notes here. Five to 20 year incubation. Uh, the clinical stage usually lasts about 12 months. So once the patient uh, uh, reaches um, the point where they are symptomatic, they've got about a year left. All right, so 12 month average clinical uh, length. And then the, uh, the, the pr progression of the disease is uh, divided into three stages. First is called ambient. Um, and, uh, or ambulant, I'm sorry, pardon me, um, ambulant. And at this early stage, the patient is um, shaky on their feet. They, maybe their speech is getting a little slurry. They're kind of staggering around. Um, over a period of weeks to months, they're going to enter what's called the sedentary stage of the disease. Now, by this point, they're no, uh, no longer able to walk. They can still talk somewhat, perhaps. Um, they are experiencing tremors. And then the terminal, and obviously terminal final stage of the disease, uh, they can't even sit up unassisted, uh, unassisted difficulty swallowing, um, and um, uh, really serious tremors, and these outbursts of uncontrollable laughter. Uh, this is, of course, due to degeneration of the nervous system, and this will be followed by death. Um, okay, so I think the moral of the story there is um, uh, don't eat your cousins, right? Uh, or any else for that matter. Okay, then um, I'm going to go ahead and call it good for this section and then when I come back I will start a survey of, and I, I may have mentioned this in the first section, but here's how I'm going to divide up the rest of the material. Um, I'll do a survey of some diseases caused by DNA viruses, uh, then a survey of some RNA viruses, and then I'm going to kind of lump um, some of the different viruses that cause hepatitis together. And I wish we had time to do like way, way more uh, viral diseases that I'm able to cover, but I think you'll probably agree that it's enough for our purposes. Okay, I'm gonna call it good for now. I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.